as I, I messaged you yesterday, I, the topic of excitement's kind of been on my mind. And just a, a little story from my life recently, as I, I like to use the podcast, and when I have big revelations in my life, I like to share that with my next guest and see if we can have a conversation about it. And it actually coincidentally relates back to the NFL. Uh, you've probably avoided this in all the years, but I've been involved in some like fantasy football and different things. Uh, and there's something called the survivor pool. I don't know if you're familiar with these things at all, but people put some money in there and we, we pick one team each week that we think is going to win. And in this particular pool that I've been in, there was a lot of people involved and a lot <laughs> of money involved. And just this past week, I picked a team. I tried to go against the grain, trying to kind of get ahead of everybody, and I was wrong. And, uh, you know, it was, it was fun to watch the game to realize there's like, tens of thousands of dollars for the winner of this thing, and I, I won't win it now. But I realized then, this is, this is a life lesson tied to football and tied to you, that I don't get excited about things very easily. But I was so excited about the possibility of going through this field of 4,000 people and being the last one and getting this prize. It was so exciting. And then suddenly, <laughs> it was it gone. Was gone. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do about it because my life's pretty good. I don't really have negative things. And that was negative in the way of, like, I... I was most excited about this lately, and now I can't be excited about it anymore. So I'm thinking about like what excites me, and I have another story that relates to you. I, I think one of the most excited times of my life that also I had that moment was 10 or so years ago, the Vikings were on the verge, pushing their way towards the Super Bowl, and I had reached out to you. You weren't going to be officiating that Super Bowl, but one of your your crewmates was, and I, I just asked, is there any way, if the Vikings make it, might you be able to have access to some tickets? Like, I, I would buy them, whatever. I just, is there a way, because it's hard to get Super Bowl tickets, Very and I hard. knew you, and there's a chance that maybe I can, right. and the indication from you was, like, you know, there's a decent chance that I'd be able to get it. So the Vikings were playing the Saints that year, and for non-sports fans, this probably isn't very relevant, but the Vikings had this back and forth game in the NFC Championship against the Saints, and at the, they lost it at the end, and not only, was I feeling the years of being a fan of one of these teams, like that brings the tens of thousands of people to these games every day and millions watch it. Like I was a huge fan in this moment and I had thought I had planned to buy my flight to Miami and knowing that there's a chance, worst case scenario, I was gonna be at Miami before the Super Bowl, best case, you knew somebody and I was gonna be able to get a hold of some tickets and go to the game and suddenly they lost. And that was one of the memories from my life of being so excited about the possibility of something and then it vanished. And that was hard to deal with yeah. because I'm not excited about things like that very often. Yeah. So I guess as I tell these couple stories of my excitement, I'm curious how other people relate to excitement. Uh, what does that bring up to you in your life? Like when you've been most excited or do you get excited day to day? Like what I mean, there's, you? there's there's a few times that, uh, I mean, I've had a lot of really exciting moments in my life, obviously from my officiating and, and from my family and, and things like that. Um, you know, I'm not a real excitable guy. I mean, either. So for me to get excited about something and really look forward to something, you know, I, I really, I really hone in on it and I like it. I can remember there was, there was when I was trying to get into the Southeastern Conference when I had re refereed 14 years of high school ball and I had applied to get in the Southeastern Conference. This is a really good story, and uh, and at the time, you know, they were taking, they were going to take some new guys into the Southeastern Conference and. And they had taken a couple of guys from the state of Florida, and I wasn't one of them. So um, I went to, they have, a, the SEC has a golf tournament like every June. And I got invited to go to this golf tournament. And I thought, well, you know, you got you to gotta be seen, and you got to talk to people, and you got to do the right thing, and you got to get to know people. And I wasn't going to go because I, you know, I had, I had worked the spring game at the University of Florida, and I'd worked the spring game at the University of Auburn. And the supervisor of officials was at the game at Auburn. The spring game and watched me work and he said you know you, I'll be in touch with you real soon you did a great job I mean he gave me all the accolades and be in touch with you real soon indicating that it was, I was going to be taken mm -hmm. into the Southeastern Conference to officiate well I never heard a word and this is like in April March or April so I went to this golf tournament and I'm playing golf with a couple of guys from Florida that I knew that that officiated there and I just went because I thought, you know, I'll go and say hi to the guys and maybe I'll, you know, see what happens going on. So I'll never forget this as long as I live. We were got done with the front side and we came around to go to the back side and the supervisor's officials, Bobby Gaston at the time, wonderful human being, wonderful man. And uh, he walks up and said hi and we shook hands and he was kind of looking at me like, 
aren't you going to say something to me? And, you know, just had that look. And I'm just sitting there <laughs> trying to think, what, what, what's he doing? So finally, we talked and we're getting ready to go. And he said, Larry, can I ask you a question? I said, certainly. He said, uh, did you get your letter? And I said, I, 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 what, what are you talking about? I said, I don't understand. He said, we sent you a letter back at the end of April, 1st of May, that you're going to be an official in the Southeastern Conference this year. And I'll never forget. <laughs> I said, excuse me for just a second, Bobby. And I walked over about 10 feet, and God strike me down from mine. I had friends of mine there. I did a complete black flip, landed on my feet, walked over, and said, you just made me the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> and he said, he said, my secretary must have screwed up. He said, when I get back there, your letter will get right out. And they had it overnighted to me. By Tuesday, I got the letter that I was supposed to have gotten three months ago. And all that time, I had no idea. That's how I found out that I was going to refer in the Southeastern Conference the next year. And do you think because those those weeks and months passed where you, you thought you had a chance and then you maybe felt demoralized or whatever you feel. Yeah, well, I, when I walked out of that locker room at Auburn that day, I was really excited. I thought, man, you know, this this could happen. I got a really good chance of this happening. And then as, it, like you say, you know, like with your football, all of a sudden it wasn't there and it just kept draining, draining, draining. And I wasn't going to go to this golf tournament. And the last minute I said, oh, I'll go. And I didn't expect anything. And all of a sudden he does that, says that to me and I thought, Wow, all the hard work I put in and everything I've done. Even like when I was trying to get in the Southeastern Conference, I would be at home at 10 o'clock at night, the phone would ring, and you know, it's Florida or Georgia, somebody call and say, we got a scrimmage tomorrow at one o'clock, can you be here? By golly, you get in the car and go. You don't get paid, you don't get anything. You just go so you can be seen. I mean, those are the things that you put in, the disciplines you put in to try to be there. And then when you get there, you gotta be, you better be good. You know, and, and, and that, yeah, that was a moment. That was an exciting moment. And, I've had some others that, you know, like when I got the phone call that I was going to referee the Super Bowl. You know, that that's the biggest sporting event there are in the world. There's 100 million people watching on television. It's a really neat phone call. And then when you get there, and it's actually, I can remember standing on the sideline when I got there to referee the football game. And before the game, you know, they play the national anthem, obviously. And, you know, and, they, and it, was in, it was in Arizona, and they shut all the lights off inside, and they got things. And it was at night, obviously. The game is always at, at 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. And I'm standing on the sideline. I'm standing beside the guy that's going to be the back judge in the game. And I turned to him. I said, listen, when they play the national anthem, I get a little teary out. I said, you make sure you hold me up. I said, don't let me. I said, get me through this. Because you're excited. I mean, you're really excited. You're getting ready to referee this. I mean, there's, there's people everywhere. The excitement is off the chart. So they started playing. And I started to get a little teared up. And I looked over at him. And he was crying like a baby. And I said, I thought this so was over. I said, I thought you were going to help me. And you're over here crying. I mean, that's the excitement. That's the, what you, the roller coaster that you go through. Then all of a sudden, they put the ball on the tee. Off you go, and it's another football game. And it's just, you, you know, and then there's many times, like, you know, you get excited and for something, and it doesn't happen mm -hmm. like you did. And those things happen. But those are some exciting times in my life. And probably the most exciting times in my life is when my children were born. That was off the chart excitement to be a part of that and watch it and see it in real life and see it in nature it was extremely exciting to be there and be a part of that so those are probably the most things that i can think of off the top of my head that are very exciting that were very very special and will hold a special place in my heart i think there's two types of excitement then maybe like there's the excitement that about a possibility and then it, the possibility doesn't happen right and that disappears but like the excitement, maybe crying at the Super Bowl, like you, the excitement is coming to its completion. Like there's, it's not going to disappear. Like it, it ends, but you know it's going to end. There's nothing about that that's strange. You've, you've lived through this. You've experienced it. You've, you've like made it. Like I don't know that there's a higher point in your career than getting to be one of the officials at that game. So you're experiencing the excitement of, I, I can't do much better right. at what this job would offer. Yeah, I mean, that's the pinnacle. I mean, it's like, it's like players, you know, they, they want to, you know, they want to play in the Super Bowl. You know, they want the ring. And it's not about the money. It's about the pride. It's about being successful. It's about winning the biggest game. It's like guys in baseball winning the World Series. You know, there's things like that that are important. Sometimes it's not about the money. It's about the performance, and it's about the pride, and it's about the exhilaration of winning. And I've been on the other end of losing, too. I mean, there's times I've gone to excitement, and I've lost, and I was down, you know. But at least I had a chance, and that's all I've ever asked in life is give me a chance to be excited 
And if I fail, okay, then I'll let the excitement go down and I'll go on to the next thing and I'll get excited again. Just because I didn't get the first one, the first one's prize, I'm going to keep getting there until I get another one and I get another prize and I get another prize. If every time I can take a, take go up the bat and take a swing, I got a chance and that's all I've ever asked in life. Just give me a chance and you know, and I was fortunate in my officiating career to, to, to get that chance.